The American Heritage Festival is an annual event which takes place in Lake City, South Carolina. This multi-era military festival offers so much information and experiences. While I was unable to capture everything that we saw and learned during this festival, I was lucky enough to capture the lecture about General Patton and some lectures about Francis Marion. I hope you enjoyed this information as much as I did. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and as always, thanks for watching. Museum curator, historian for the United States Air Force uh, Special Warfare Squadron at Polk Army Airfield, formerly known as the Combat Control School. And if you know who John Chapman is, the only winner of the Medal of Honor from the United States Air Force on Rogers Ridge, he is a graduate of the school that I work at. Okay? Today we're going to talk about Francis Marion, and we're going to add a modern perspective on his conduct of guerrilla warfare. We're going to give titles to his functionary areas for him to succeed. Okay, uh, for reference, I use FM 3121, Special Forces, uh, Guerrilla Warfare and Special uh, Forces Operation. I'm also a graduate of Special Forces School in 1973. I got tired of the regular army and decided to give that a try. And for the next 21 years, I wore a Green Beret uh, in Special Forces. Okay. After that, I went into the Forest Service and then into the museum systems. Uh, now, during SF school, back in 1973, the final phase, the last two weeks, we jumped into the notional country of Pineland where we linked up with a resistance element or a guerrilla band. We trained, organized, and equipped them to conduct operations against the evil upper peninsulars who had invaded the northern province of Thailand. Some 30 years later, I was hired as a contractor, okay, as a role player, to work at that school as a guerrilla chief. Nothing changed. The very same thing I learned in 1973 was the same thing I was torturing students with as a guerrilla chief. Nothing changed, okay? And it doesn't change today. The success of that story was we dropped five Special Forces A teams in northern Afghanistan and they knocked off a country. Worked out pretty good. Sometimes known as the horse soldiers, okay? Another success story of that is when Che Guevara started making an ass of himself in Bolivia. The Bolivian government asked the United States to come down there and help. who they send? They sent two Special Forces A detachments, okay, to uh, conduct guerrilla warfare. Who would you want to t conduct counter guerrilla warfare? So they went down there, they trained up the Rangers, uh, a Ranger unit, the Bolivian Army, they went after Che, and they got him. Worked pretty good. Okay, a short history on Francis Marion before we get into his tactics. Uh, he was uh, born here in South Carolina. He served, th he learned his military skill in the British Army while fighting the Anglo Cherokee battles of the French and Indian War. At the beginning of the War of Independence, he became a patriot, a traitor to the British. Okay, and conducted operations in the Southern Theater of the Continental Army. Francis Marion conducted his operations over here in the Pocosin Swamp on a place called Snow Island. It's between here and Conway, almost along the Drake PD River. And from there, he projected his forces out to literally cut, cut the British Army means and lines of communication between their base in Charleston and their forward bases, okay? He was extremely successful. He literally cut them off. The British could not support their outer bases. They couldn't get information. He cut them off, and he was very successful in that. He also, through his psychological warfare uh, uh, operations, he stopped the loyalists from telling on him, from telling on their operations to telling on the movements of the, con the Continental Army here in the uh, Southern Theater. Now, 
let's talk about guerrilla warfare and giving some functional names of how he needed to be successful. To do this, this is the guerrilla band right here. These are the evil traitors to the British government. They're well known by the British, so they took off and ran to hide in the woods. They took their guns and whatever they needed, their husbandry requirements, their tonnage, so they could live out on Snow Island. This is the guerrilla band here. You evil people. Right here is the auxiliary. I'll get more in detail to them as we conduct an operation. Over here is the underground, the spies, you know, the ones who sneak around. So it looks at the functions of each one of these groups. The guerrilla band, you got a pretty good idea what they do. They project from a base camp and they attack the enemy. They hit and run, hit and run. They also supply themselves by battlefield recovery. They take food, they take ammunition, they take powder, whatever they can get from that ambush. We call that battlefield recovery. But that's only possible for a man to succeed in guerrilla warfare if he has the support of the people. You must have the support of the people. Case in point, Che Guevara in Bolivia. He was down there for almost two years and nobody followed him. Why? The people were happy with the country. They were not oppressed. He couldn't recruit. He couldn't build a large guerrilla band like he had done in Cuba or he tried to do in Africa. That didn't work out too well. I spent 10 years in Africa and I understand why that fell. But anyway, so here's the underground right here. The evil spies. They are citizens. They're loyalists to the British. He's a storekeeper. He's a farrier. Uh, he's a wagon driver. He may even work in the government, the British government. He might even be with them, okay? But in his heart, he's a patriot. But his cover for status and his cover for action is he's a loyalist. So he's out there doing his liveliness. The British walks up to him and says, let's use Bannister Carlton. He walks up to the store manager and says, I need 50 pounds of flour. I need this and that because I got to take it to Camden, my outpost at Camden. Uh, and I'll be leaving on Saturday. Ah, information. So I, now I've got to get that information from the underground to the guerrillas. How do I do that? I use the auxiliary. Okay. Daytime patriots, I'm sorry, daytime loyalists, nighttime patriots. And they use a thing known as clandestine communication to get that information from here to here. That's dead letter drops, personal meeting places. Uh, example, I'm going down the road in my wagon and I've got this message and I want to get it to, to Francis Marion. How am I going to do that without being captured, without being seen, conducting an overt act? Well, I'm going to stop at this intersection because right there I'm going to leave a stick and a rock right there, okay? That's a signal, that's a load signal. That means I'm gonna have information that are coming down. We'll call that a load signal. So the next person within the, see they're cutouts. They don't know who each, who each other are. They talk through mailboxes, okay? They communicate that way unless they do a per, personal meeting. But anyway, so this auxiliary member, okay, we've got the message. We gotta get it to Francis Marion. So we pass it to this group who lives close to Snow Island, they go, ah, we got to get this to Francis Marion. So we pass it to Francis Marion. He gets the information. You won't hear me use the word intelligence. Here's why. It's the worst used word in the world today. Because when people say, oh, we got intelligence, we collected intelligence. Okay, when I was consulting at the CIA on their museum, everybody speak loudly now. Okay. In, in God we trust, all others we monitor. This shirt was given to me by the senior curator up there. Uh, he's a really great guy. But uh, uh, so what we're going, to, what we did is we got that. The, the word in, intel is misused because you get information, you process it to a usable product, and it becomes intelligent. So that's what the gorilla Francis Marion has to do. He's going to get this information. He's going to go. Okay, here's a wagon. Uh, some Radun, Radun, uh troops, they're going to Camden on this day, they got to take this road, so I'll send out a route recon, we'll establish an ambush site, and that's where we'll hit them. And we do. 
we get their food, we get their ammunition, their uh, ammunition, and what other other items I can recover from the battlefield that I can carry. But now let's run that in reverse. Francis Marion has had a dry spell. He hasn't been able to attack the British. He hasn't been able to recover some supplies he needs, okay, to survive. So what does he do? He sends a message because most of his forces, if you look at it historically, they were not paid. They brought everything they needed to survive on Blue Snow's Island and to conduct their operations. But anyway, so Francis Marion here says, I need uh, rations, I need powder, I need balls. I got to get it, okay? With the support of the auxiliary, he sets up a message. He goes out, puts his load signal out, and walks away. One of you will be walking down that road, see that load signal, and go, aha, there's a message buried behind that tree in a glass jar. So I go get that message and I open it up. I need rations, I need powder, I need medical supplies. Aha, uh -huh. now I got to get that up uh, from the people around here. Just the auxiliary, not the underground, because that's not an underground uh, function. So you in the auxiliary will say, okay, let's get some food. Now, how am I going to get that to Francis Marion? How am I going to get that without getting caught by the British? without being rolled up as a disloyal traitor. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in my wagon, and I'm going to go, like I'm going to market, I go every Friday. I go to this market. They're used to seeing me go to market on that day. Right up the same trail. Well, I stop and say, there's my friend's fence, i got to fix it. So I get out, and I go to fix that fence. Cover for status, cover for action. So I'm out there fixing the fence. Okay. Three or four of the gorillas come up, grab stuff out of my wagon, and run off in the woods. And what do I say? Oh, them, them, them horrible patriots, they stole my food. Now, he's covered. He hasn't been rolled up. He hasn't done a deliberate act that they would consider him as a traitor. Pretty neat the way it works. But anyway, what I've done in this talk is uh, assign modern terms and functions to those things that Francis Marion would have needed to survive as a guerrilla warfare uh, chief, as a G chief. And it's quite an interesting story. You know, he never went toe to toe with the British. He never did. He had a bad day at Camden, I guess. He never made it to Calpins, but he operated out of that Pertosan swamp very, very effectively. And like I said, he's considered to be one of the modern fathers of guerrilla warfare, along with uh, John S. Mosby, my hero, okay, and others, guerrilla fighters. So, do I have any questions from anyone? Hello? Anything? Well, uh, I'm going to we're reading a little bit lately about the Patriots and the Loyalists. I mean, how did they not, how did they not know each, how did they hide from each other, I guess, in daily life? You mean the, the auxiliary? Uh, yeah. They went by, they went by their daily function every day. But, but if you were a farmer, you farmed all day. But some were Loyalists and some were the Patriots. Yes. How did they figure each other out? And well, Francis Marion conducted a uh, psychological warfare operation. And if we look at it with today's lens, it was horrible what he did, okay? The loyalists feared telling on him. Why? Because of his retribution. Okay. So that was in place. But if you're a patriot hiding in the shadows, hiding in the darkness, okay, uh, at night supporting him, okay, your daily function, you're covered. Okay, the British looks at you and goes, oh, that guy's a corn farmer, or that guy's a hog farmer. He goes to market every so your daily function allows you to move supplies, move equipment, move information to the gorillas or back up to the underground. Okay, did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this talk. Very interesting. And have a wonderful day. Thank you.